Hi, everybody. I'm Morgan Linton, and today I am really excited to talk with you about the future of commerce. And really, if we're going to talk about the future, it's absolutely critical that we start with the past to understand really how we got to where we are today. And so really one of the first innovations when we look at how commerce has changed over time is this, the Sears catalog. And Richard Sears has this incredible idea back in the 1800s that what if you could shop from the comfort of your home and you could get this catalog that had all these different products that you could think of that you'd normally buy from a store, but you could sit at home, order these products, and they'd actually be shipped to your door. So they would arrive at home, you never had to leave your house. Incredible, right? Well, Actually, what happened was technology also worked in his favor because the railroads became more efficient, there was this concept of rural free delivery where it was even easier to deliver these products from all over the world to your doorstep in the US. And this continued for a long time. Actually, all the way until 1993. Yes, that same Sears catalog that started back in the 1800s actually continued and people were still ordering things to their home in 1993. And I can read your minds right now. I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking 1993 was a very special year because that's the year, yeah, that Jurassic Park came out. <laughs> but I digress. Actually, I think we need to go a little further back in time to really understand how commerce got to where it is today and to really appreciate where we're going in the future. And so where did this all start? Where did the concept of buying things like we do today come from? It came from here, from Rome, actually in 100 AD. And this has persisted all the way through to today because shopping malls are everywhere, all over the world. And shopping malls have become more than just a place to buy things. People go to shopping malls to be able to meet friends and families for food or drinks. People go and see movies in shopping malls. But there's a big change happening and this change is driven by something that has fundamentally changed all of our lives and will continue to change our lives and change the way that we buy and sell things. I'm talking about this, the internet. Okay, and so the internet has actually completely changed the dynamics of shopping malls. And now what we're noticing is a lot of these stores that are in shopping malls are starting to close down and the malls themselves are starting to close down as people are going back to this concept that Richard Sears pioneered of, hey, I can shop and buy things from the comfort of my own home. So what does this look like and how has it evolved now that the internet has impacted commerce? And really one of the things that I want to highlight is this like newfangled idea of e-commerce, of wow, I can shop at home, I can shop online, is actually incredibly similar to that exact same idea that Richard Sears had back in the 1800s. So let's look at these side-by-side -side images here. Uh, one of these is the Sears catalog, and if you wanted to buy a guitar and have a guitar shipped to your house, which seems like a pretty cool thing to do. Now, in this magical future of 2017, you can actually also have a guitar shipped to your house. And if you look at these two experiences, they actually look very similar. And so if you actually kind of take a step back and look at what e-commerce is today, it really is the digitization of the catalog. It's the same approach, the same idea of, I can look at this catalog of products, I can pick what I want, and it's shipped to my door. That same concept that Richard Sears had back in the 1800s persists today. But thanks to digital technology, these catalogs can be massively large, shipping times are fast, there's a lot of innovation around how we do this, but that concept has persisted. How did it all start? Well, it started with Amazon.com and it started with books. The original idea behind Amazon was, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you could get these physical paper books shipped to your home? And so they created really the first e-commerce site. This is what it looked like. Um, and that's where it all started. Obviously, that's expanded a lot over time. And so now, when you look at Amazon.com today, it's just a gigantic catalog. And so, you know, I want you to, you know, kind of take this leap of faith here with me. When you're looking at this image behind me of Amazon.com today, this is the most cutting edge e-commerce website in the world. The most money, the most traffic, the most products, everything. And this, to all of us, should really make us realize that all of us sitting here right now today are actually living in the past. 
Seriously, we're living in the past because this is going to look incredibly antiquated 10 or 20 years from now. And so let's kind of take a look. Well, what did the world look like 20 years ago? Um, and to do this, I've actually uh, brought a time machine with me. And uh, we're, going to go, we're going to go back to the future now. And so how does the world change when we have a new way to be able to uh, visualize and see things on the internet on, uh, uh, in a commerce setting, and really, it's a big change that I think no one's probably going to believe now, but 20 years from now, you're probably going to say, oh, wow, maybe I should have seen this coming, and it's the end of physical screens. So right now, you go home, and there's your TV, and you have a TV screen, and your computer has a screen, and well, maybe you have a laptop, but that's just a keyboard with a screen attached to it or a tablet, which essentially is just a portable screen, or your smartphone, which also has a screen. Well, in the future, augmented and virtual reality are actually going to replace the screen. So instead of having this physical screen, you're going to wear a headset. And in the case of augmented reality, that's going to project a holographic image in front of you. In the case of virtual reality, that's going to immerse you in a virtual world. But you won't necessarily go home and sit in your living room and look at a physical screen. You'll actually go home and sit in your living room and put your headset on, or maybe the glasses you're already wearing have that holographic technology built into it, and it will project the most high-resolution images directly in front of your eyes. So going back, thinking about this and going, well, that seems far-fetched. How is it possible none of us have these devices in our homes right now? Well, let me remind you that this is what a computer looked like 20 years ago. This is what a television looked like 20 years ago. And this is what a car looked like 20 years ago. If you compare this car to a Tesla, it seems like this has to be at a 100-year difference. But technology is moving very quickly. Innovation is happening fast. And so it's not hard to imagine that a website like this, this is the Sears website, is probably going to look incredibly outdated 20 years from now when your e-commerce setting is actually projected in front of you through the glasses that you're wearing on your head. So what is this world going to look like? How are you going to shop in AR and VR? Well, the really interesting thing about it is we're actually going to go back to that very similar shopping experience that you had in 100 AD. The idea of being able to go into a world where you can actually look at products and move them around and walk around them and then instantly buy them. And so an example like this here is something that actually already exists today. You can actually go to certain furniture stores where you put on augmented reality glasses and you can pick out different furniture and place it in your house and it's holographically projected into that room. And so this changes everything, because we go from this flat catalog approach that we've really had since the 1800s, since the Sears catalog, and we move back into this much more immersive, experience-driven world where shopping means being able to, first off, use a different input device than we've used. You remember the mouse, and that evolved into the trackpad. Well, now you can use these things again, your hands. And so you can actually look at objects and turn them around and move them closer to you using your hands as you would in real life or as you would during a normal shopping experience in a mall, except this time in a digital format. We also have some incredible ways that you can now personalize the experience. So imagine if I booked a trip on Expedia to go to the Swiss Alps. Well, maybe then when I go into my virtual or augmented reality shopping experience, they may have that information. And so maybe when I walk into that virtual store, I look on the racks and there's ski jackets and ski pants and ski helmets. Well, how do they know that? Because all these experiences are connected and personalized. Right now, when I go to a physical store, they're trying to get things for everybody, right? So it's not like they're just gonna carry clothes in my size. If I'm a medium and I go into a clothing store, I'm gonna have plenty of clothes that are small and large and extra large. In my augmented or virtual reality store, everything I see are clothes that fit me, are products that I like, are colors that I like. And so you have this hyper-personalized experience that we've really never seen before. But with this comes increased consumer expectations. And so one of the big expectations that's changing now is how quickly things are delivered. And so what is going to innovate this? is going to be these little guys, drones. So it's not hard to imagine that you'd go into your virtual or augmented reality store, 
and you buy something, and a drone goes from a warehouse a few blocks from your house, picks up the product, zooms into the air, flies over to your house, and drops it off at your doorstep maybe five to 10 minutes after you ordered it. So let's go back up to 30,000 feet and do a recap of where we started in commerce, where we are now, and where we're going. So it all started here. That's why it's so cool that we're here in Rome, because this really is the birthplace of modern commerce, the first shopping mall. Then Richard Sears came out with the Sears catalog and innovated again with this idea of a catalog approach, being able to shop from home, having things shipped to your door. And now that catalog has been digitized. You can view that same catalog approach, but there's a lot more products that you can search, and you can do this on a computer screen, on a tablet screen, on a smartphone screen. It's all happening on screens, though. And this idea of quick, free shipping. Amazon at first introduced this idea of Prime, two-day shipping, free shipping, anything comes in two days. Then they introduced Prime Now, a concept of, well, now you can shop for things, and they're going to come within an hour. Well, as we move forward, all these experiences continue to be digital, but we move into virtual and augmented reality. And so the incredible thing here is if you look at the evolution of commerce, in many ways, we've actually come full circle. Maybe the original concept, that initial innovation that happened right here in Rome back in 100 AD, they actually got it right back then. And we're now coming full circle to be able to take that same experience of shopping and digitizing that and providing that in an augmented or virtual reality world. So it'll actually be similar to the way that we've shopped all along, but now taking advantage of these incredible technologies that are just at our fingertips. And I don't know about you, but I am very excited to live in that world. Thank you very much.